it would just be regarding them as one of the weaker teams that could even finish last in their group. But right now they're fending for themselves pretty well. I think they're three and five, or I believe so. Yeah, three uh, five, I they are. They are three. They have, they have they have tied yeah they've tied three of their series against Fnatic Empire and Secret and they lost outright to Liquid. Okay, yeah. so right now the bottom of the barrel in that group is one and seven. I believe it's Fnatic in this group. Correct. Um, so at this point, when you're starting to reach the or get toward the end of the group stage, ev I mean, always ev every game always matters. But at this point, if Infamous can grab like one or two wins against one of the stronger teams, they almost secure themselves a spot at the main event. Yeah, and. Uh, in some optics, that would already be surpassing expectations. I think for themselves, they obviously expect more than to get last place. Uh, but it's just a good start for them to get to play on the on the main stage and, and prove what they really can do in an elimination game. Yeah. So we'll see what they can do. LGD are on the other side of the scale. They're second place, I believe, in the group right now. Yes, they are. With seven and three. They're, they're in the top four. They're in the top four. Oh, I thought they were second with seven and three. Ten seconds remaining. Infamous's turn to pick. <laughs> Yep, S seven and three. You are right. They are second, uh, which is interesting because they went six and zero oh on the first day, and then they had a one and three day yesterday. So it might have they they had they team. had an easier run on on day one. Yeah, like their their matches I think were a lot more favorable to them. But that loss against IGV have kind of like not not crippled them, but it's put them behind Team Liquid, who are now sitting in number yeah. one position in the group. The interesting thing about that IGV matchup was that you looked at the group and you're like, LGD is one of the absolute strongest teams here, but apparently they always lose to IGV. It was like a running joke in the... It's like a running joke in the Chinese community, pretty much. That uh -huh. I think the current score between those teams favors IGV by 16 to 2 in matches. That's and decent about. It's interesting because, you know, LGD has been for the most part, doing better in bigger international tournaments, and they're looking better in the TI groups here, but they that's just their Achilles heel. They can't beat IGV. It's just not possible. So when they're in that group, that's going to be two losses right there. <laughs> they just have to deal with yeah, it. That's, that's really sad. That's almost like an EG complexity moment right there. Yeah. <laughs> Except it's nowhere near that extreme. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so... <sighs> Man, I'm wondering what what Infamous we're going to see. We've cast, we've cast Infamous once already this yep. this tournament, and in game one we were sitting there scratching our heads, going, "What the hell is this team? This team makes no sense. They're completely disjointed. It doesn't work at all." And then game two they fought back against Team Secret, and yep. then they actually slaughtered. They were perfectly coordinated. They got farm on their core. Matthew uh, played out of his mind with his rotations. They had some really good individual performances and some good moves and played way better than the first game, but I don't feel like they slaughtered Secret. That was a really close game uh, with a lot of hiccups along the way, but they got the win, and that's what really matters. They did get the win. So um, I haven't seen their wins since then. Those are games I did not watch, but mm -hmm. uh, I think... If they take what if they took what they did right against Secret and just polished it a little bit, it seemed like there was a bit of uh, you know entry into the tournament jitters. They were making like really risky plays sometimes, or making some weird buybacks. You, you remember that end of the game, AM almost trying to go by himself on the throne for yep. <clears throat> pardon me for like no reason actually. They had mega creeps and could have lost if he tried for it, but then his team got him back to base. <laughs> um, so they they were uh, they seemed a little bit um, nervous maybe. Hopefully their nerves have calmed down a bit. They're going to need to play a really good game to take a game off of LGD. I think, fair yeah. to say, LGD are clear favorites to 2-0 this one. Uh, I, I would agree. and you, Because we have to keep in perspective, too, the fact that like Infamous took games off Fnatic as well as Empire, two teams who were struggling yeah. in this tournament. They worked hard against Secret, and then they lost outright against a team who was a lot more in form, like Team Liquid. So the wise man, if you were betting your rares on this, would just lean towards the side of LGD quite heavily. Especially now that LGD have picked up a hero who we haven't got to ca haven't get to cast yet, uh, but the Magnus pick up. Mm -hmm. So welcome to Empower Buff Up. Welcome to a world of pain for Infamous for cleave damage and cleave farming. This is, uh, this is interesting. Um, Magnus hasn't got that much love. They also chose to pick it into Rubik and Puck, who are both heroes that you like to have against Mag. You can spell steal the RP. You can... Uh, Puck has a really good lane matchup against the Magnus, can dodge the Shockwave with phase shift, can harass him from a distance, if it's a mid-mag. We don't know that yet, but uh, I think <laughs> it seems fairly likely. Why do I feel like they just picked that to block it against LGD? Yeah, they could have. Uh, it's one of the classic Magnus combos, but Magnus has a lot of friends. Yeah. And this is another friend he has. Troll Warlord, 
<clears throat> good hero with Empower, good hero matchup against Juggernaut. Uh, the reason this matchup is very nice for Troll is that Troll has innately extremely high armor. Uh, he gets... How much armor is it from his one point in his passive? Let me just check that. I think it's like an obscene amount he gets from that. Six armor from Skilling Berserker's Rage uh, on all levels. So when Troll is playing melee form, from the, in the beginning of the game, he has like eight or nine armor, and then you itemize items that also give armor. And then Juggernaut, eh, you know, doesn't really fight him too well. And when he comes out of Omni Slash in the man fight, Troll wins. That's just how yep. it's gonna go. He's gonna bash you once and you're dead. So, you need to find a way to work around that too, Infamous. They're gonna get the Sand King. Okay. It's pretty well rounded lineup so far in terms of team fight and lanes. Yeah, the only thing we're missing right now is uh, understanding if that's a mid or an off lane puck. Yes, I think it's fair to say that the Sand King should be a support this game. They could technically run it off lane as well, but I think they'd rather put it support and get a better core matchup than this, because I don't think this is a very good core Sand King off lane game. I think he's gonna have like a really Sand King hard time. versus a troll safe, that's if the troll goes safe. That's okay. It's more Sand King struggles in a lot of one on twos and one on threes. Uh, Shadow Shaman is a really annoying matchup. It's such a long lockdown, he has really high attack damage. You can't really go to the creep wave as Sand King if, Sen if Shadow Shaman has a sentry. Just puts a sentry down, you can't sandstorm. If you try to go in to draw creep back or whatever, you get shackled and he hits you four times and you have to use a salvo go back to base. Uh, and Troll can obviously assist at any point. So it's uh, Shadow Shaman's biggest strength, in my opinion, as a safe lane support is when you outnumber the opponent, whether it's 2 on 1, 3 on 2, or 1 on 0. I was like, Yao, Yao's okay. kind of with. <laughs> no reaction to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to go for it, man. <laughs> I'm not taking your bait this morning. Uh, the Legion Commander being banned out, so uh, LGD do believe too that this will be a mid puck. Uh, support SK and safe lane Juggernaut. Yep. Uh, we have seen uh, King Tekka playing Legion earlier, so could have definitely been a choice. He can break out of the RP for an ally. Um, and is a decent counterpick to Shadow Shaman in some ways. Tanky enough in the lane to not get killed. Uh, has the. Press the attack later against Shaman spells, which is very nice. And it's also just the infamous infamous hero. That's yeah. that's the primary thing. It's also targeted ban. Yeah. Sure. Remo remove the comfort away. There goes the Dragon Knight of Somnus. They're probably thinking that the Mag is off lane with this ban, which is a fair enough expectation. I think Mag can still be run mid. Uh, it's actually see. a hard thing too. Like you you've got a you've got to pick up your hero without actually fully understanding the LGD lanes. Yeah. Even even knowing like what your off lane is, like they're making assumptions and they go for a Doombringer. Could even be a troll mid. A troll mid? Yeah, it could be a troll mid. Could easily be a troll mid. It's right. A good matchup. Puck right now, Puck will loses like. this lane. Uh, it's one of the hardest matchups for Puck actually to play. It's very annoying because, like I said, troll has really high armor. So, the way Puck generally wins its lanes is that it just consistently harasses the opponent and takes advantage of phase shift and the orb, but. Troll can fight you back. He can just run at you, and you have to yield. You're going to lose the man fight against this hero, and that's something Puck doesn't do to too many heroes in mid. So. I wonder why they went they for the Doombringer. Yeah. Like, it it well. doesn't make as, lo as much sense to me. Uh, I like, think it's like a pretty hard Doom game, actually. Yeah, it's like harassment in the lane is going to be at least something he can because that's what Doombringer's been picked for in this tournament. But. In the team fights, which is what LGD is going to wrap around, like it's just I, I, I RP, troll goes in, and we win the fight, hands down. How is Doom meant to stop that? There's no big target who you're like, I have to keep this guy out, and then LGD actually gives them a target, um, <laughs> which is Soul Spirit to Doom. <laughs> this is not my uh, my idea of a storm game, personally. It's uh, he's picked into a couple of counters. Rubik is decent. Puck is pretty good. Sand King has an instant stun. His, la his laning Doom. phase should be good though. That's that's the upside. Uh, it's all right. I think it's still a puck favorite lane, to be honest. But uh, Somnus, also known as probably by a lot of people as maybe that was his previous name, is, yep. is a very mechanically skilled player in the mid lane. He's one of the best, so might still be able to win this lane out against Tomato, who is more up more of an up and coming player. Uh, I believe also very young, actually. Uh, unless I'm wrong, Tomato is 17, 16, 17. He's only 17. Something like that. I think I was told yesterday, and I had no idea. So. Um, one last comment on the Doom, by the way. I think Nyx Assassin's a really annoying matchup. Because you have to go in with Scorched Earth and you guarantee the Nyx is done every time. You can just carapace you and it's done you after. So. Yeah. Um, a couple of a bit strange picks here, I would say, but what ends up happening in a lot of games is that teams will just pick heroes that are they're comfortable with and strategies that they like in spite of them not being the best pick in the pool. Mm -hmm. um, it's 
It's like, you can make an argument, is it because their hero pools are not big enough, or is it because they have other options, but this is just the one they feel this, the most in. This may actually just be the greed option, where they're like, you know, I think we're a little bit behind. They push Matthew onto the Doombringer, so they are going to run that support doom and the offlane SK, and they could just throw him into the jungle. Get a huge farm up on him, rotate in towards the mid, and then just give the advantage that way. All right. This is one I've never seen before in predictions. We're going to help everyone who's, who's tuning in right now. Uh, prediction, first player with a triple kill. I'll do Storm, I think, on that. You're going to go Storm? Yeah, I think so. Storm or Troll? Uh, we're going to see a triple kill by Storm, so... If they get ahead in the fight, Storm can clean up. I'll do Storm. I'll go Troll, just to be different. Alright. Um, Highest magic or pure damage? Done to heroes by 10 minutes into the game. It's the same we don't have a Dark Sea to help us out in this front. This is actually a little bit more different. Prosta! Niche! I love that one. I think, uh, I think Puck on this. You'd say Puck? You would yeah. think, uh, I suppose, like, Shaman Shocks wouldn't be enough. Ah, uh, it's not going to be enough. I think Puck, Puck is, on paper, the hero that should win this one. That doesn't mean he does. And then it's going to be a Storm Spirit that does it. Yeah, it's a bit hard for Storm to do a lot of magic damage before 10 minutes, though. He doesn't really yeah, start doing magic And he doesn't do it to heroes, heroes, he does it to the, to the creep Exactly, wave. until he's level 6, he doesn't do it to heroes. Player with the highest total physical damage done to heroes at the end of the game. Troll. 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 <laughs> it's just... It's uh, like, just player with most obvious. kills at minute 10. Huh. Well, that's a little bit more... We've got 15 seconds to decide this. We've got time. No one's going to engage anywhere, so we're good. I'll do Shadow Shaman. Really? Yeah. Let's see. I think the safe lane of theirs is going to be uh, pretty... Or actually, oh, they're aggroing. Oh, well, too late. Okay. I picked. Yeah, and I actually panic picked as well. I picked Victoria. <laughs> okay, who's that? <laughs> I'm like scrolling what, down, just like, that? I'm thinking about the map. It's it's the Nyx Assassin. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's... I think that one is less likely. The re So the reason I wanted to pick Shaman is that I think this game is going to be fairly quiet the first 10 minutes. And I was like, which lane is going to kill? And I think it's going to be the Shaman troll lane that will kill. And then the other shock will be the finishing move. So that was my logic behind it. We'll see if that's... If that ends up happening. So. Well, we're we are currently replaying the story of every sad Intel hero in the mid, where Nick Assassin comes in, mana burns, and then the lane is just very very sad. Uh, but full lane switch up, trolls up on top. Manx is taking a while to get down to the bottom where Benjaz is fighting, and Acel has already rotated himself up to the top lane. So uh, King Tekka and Acel will work together as the SK and the Rubik on the top against Troll and Shaman. I like how uh, Infamous has set their laning up here. Um, I think it's very important that the Sand King gets to play uh, a matchup like this, where he has help, or that he is at least in the safe lane. Because wow, if he was Tomato, playing, you committed to that? He's going to actually get hit down. One more attack from Victoria will do the work, and he actually takes first blood in the mid lane. He came in for the range creep. He orbed to get the range creep while taking damage from Victoria. He'd already mana burned him. But it was the fact he orbed to farm and now has this double wave pushing underneath his tower. At least he makes it back in time to get the experience, but yeah, that's so annoying. No, man. Playing well, against Mana Burn is so annoying. <laughs> he's, maybe he's already just so annoyed that he was like, I need to get CS. And he was willing to risk it. I accept the fact I'm going to die in, <laughs> order, in order to get a range creep. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he didn't do it knowing he would die. <laughs> Thought he would get away with it. Hey, great choice on Victoria now, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Kills. He's going to rotate up towards the top lane. Essel getting slowed down by the range axes. Yao cannot get in range to get the shackle off, however. So Essel makes it back in range of his tier 1 tower to relative safety. That's that bottom lane looking. Magnus going 9-0 against the, uh, the Juggernaut. Yeah, Mag will have a damage advantage. Oh, nice skewer oh, by wow. 11. Okay, well, Benja takes a lot of extra damage he wasn't intending on. It's going to foul here. Yeah. He has a good amount of region on the Juggernaut, so it's it's okay for him, but... Nice play by Eleven there to very quickly identify the skewer was an option. Alright, so... At least Tomato is getting his own back in the mid now. He's actually ahead of CS. The Creep Wave Equilibrium is going the way of... Uh, of so of Somnus now, so he's able to farm underneath the tower. So he'll come back once more. But Tomato... Wants to be able to fight. Like, he's buying a salve. It's taking him forever to get to his bottle. And Victoria just removed most of his life and mana. Nyx being Nyx. Yes. Very, very, very annoying for the puck right now. Now he's going to see the Doom. Doom is not going to see him, though. Wonder if he can use this information for anything. He might just leech. Yep, he's going to leech half that experience. Very nice for him. But overall, this... 
I think that just that when you look at the draft, this game will be a little quiet in the start because the Doom has been run jungle and the, the LGD lineup wants to farm up. They want the Mag to get levels, they want the Storm to get levels, and the Troll to get levels before they start really looking for moves. So, yep. it's going to be a fairly low on kills here in the beginning. And so we just watch the CS counter and uh, the only one rotating hero, which is Victoria, because he's going to make life again a living hell for the mid. Walks in. I suppose Doom can see him. Hits him with an Infernal Blade. It's a level 2 Nyx here. only. And Storm Spirit. Puts down the remnants to try and create a little... Okay, that's actually just a farm. I thought he might do it a little bit aggressively just to keep Infamous out. The one in the river does that. So, Victoria. He's got one mana burn left and then we'll probably go back to base. Doesn't want to get too close. But then again, how do you even initiate? Matthew can't close the distance fast enough. Oh. He needs to be careful not to get stunned there. Could have hurt a lot. He's fine though. He's gonna go toward the bottom rune. Oh, is he? Oh, he. Okay, it looked like he was gonna go for the bounty rune first. That would have been pretty bad. But he's got the haste rune. He can take both now. Yeah, it's important he gets this rune away from the storm. Storm will go for the bounty rune instead. I think a clutch play there from the doom would have been to run down and steal that one, and then run toward his own because he had the haste. He could have got both runes. But and a selling king tech like they've burned through so many consumables on this top lane. Like, there's a salve, oh. and only a salve left on the Rubik. You thought they were going to play around mid? Yeah, Matthew was getting body blocked by the Nyx a bit, and then Nyx turned to try to stun him, and then he ran so fast they didn't even reach anyway. That's that's haste rune for you. But yeah, the lanes are going very well for LGD here. They're oh, actually... There's Matthew's rotation, turns on Scorched Earth, goes for the clap, plus Infernal Blaze, Storm Spirit slowed down, and maybe... Actually, the Remnant's done too much damage, allowing him to get back, and oh. now shackles him in, and Victoria! Panning pick for the victory! He's actually able to get his secondary kill onto Matthew, hiding in the trees, Orb flies down from Tomato, dropping him low, King Tekka really wants this under the tower, is able to find the kill. So Victoria will give up his life. King Tekka once more. Mango being consumed so he can go onto the Storm Spirit. The Orbs on his damage. Matthew charging in further. But they've already got another kill onto King Tekka. Somnus, a little bit more damage. Doesn't have enough. Victoria comes in with the Mana Burn. Looking for his third kill of the game so far. Tomato. Oh no! He actually missed path. Turned around a little bit. Yao gets his hit Let's in go, with Yao. the shock. <laughs> Yao will take the kill. Alright, he needs another one though. And uh, now it's 4-2. It's infamous. You know, the second you say it's, you just say it's gonna be a slow game again, Cinder, and just so we can have a couple more kills. Yeah, that was that was very unexpected. This carnage in the mid lane. Overall, it ends up favoring LGD slightly. But. Eleven Somnus now jumping in on the bottom lane, chasing after Matthew. Eleven taking way too much damage from Benjaz's Blade Fury, but he gets up into the tree line. Matthew underneath the tower takes too much himself, and Benjaz is on the run. One shock wave from Eleven. He's holding it, allowing Somnus to get the double kill and take the glory from Victoria. Yeah, nice rotation there from Somnus very quickly, identifying that there's help needed bottom. Uh, Magnus is a fairly tanky here. Oh, oh King maybe Tekka. Not this tanky. That's a good stun. Skew up. It's going to pull him underneath the tower. I think Storm might think about jumping this. He just picked up a regeneration route, so he can go underneath the tower and drag King Tekka back in if he wants to. He did go for that. Actually, he doesn't have the early point up in Vortex. Getting Barra Strike, that that's not going to help. Shackle, able to reach that range. Yep, that's that's the accurate range. All right, now Storm is leading, Toby. We're both losing. <laughs> Who did you have? I had Shaman. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't think there was going to be this much movement minute six from the Storm Spirit, but he's been all over the place already, so it's been in every kill they have. It's Seven been a reaction kills. though to Infamous. Like, Infamous have just been trying to, like, get in their faces on every part of this map. Yeah. LGD are just uh, a bit faster and a bit better at combining their spells and being the right heroes in there at the right times. Um, I think a big part of why the flow of the game is the way it is is just that Nyx has been annoying in mid in, from the beginning. This mana burn has made Puck suffer quite a lot and given Storm a very good game. And Infamous' counterplay was reliant on Doom getting a good creep and getting a level or two, and that just takes time. <laughs> and they had to wait for that for the whole... for a while. Amy? Yeah, he's getting, he's getting annoyed. Matthew's staying in range to leech experience, and he's trying to push him out twice. Took the Magnus to move over to get him to leave. How victorious is trying to counter Tomato a little bit. Just walk him. Take the orb by triggering Carapace. Very easy setup for Nyx Assassin to do that against Tomato. He breaks raindrops with it. It's kind of nice. Oh, yeah. It's a pretty, pretty cheap uh, raindrop break. 40 mana to just get take a raindrop off every time. Well, the runes on bottom, so Somnus not so lucky. 
It's going to be a double damage rune. Tomato, he's a lucky man going down for it. His net worth looking pretty damn good. 3.1k. He's still 600 behind the Storm Spirit. That's obviously going to happen when Storm Spirit gets kills later into the this early game. Yeah, given how the lanes went though, this is this is looking pretty good for, for Tomato overall. This could have gone way worse after the start he had with the first blood and the Nyx being annoying as we talked about already, but um, the question I have for Infamous is when does their lineup really come together? Because I think right now LGD has uh, the Storm and Nyx can keep finding kills together when Nyx gets this fast level 6 that he's cruising toward. They already have 6 on the Shaman, and they can just farm faster because they have this Empower buff up for the troll. Oh, King Tech has in trouble. Yeah, he's he's dead. This is LG smoke gank down to bottom lane. You got Matthew causing a couple of problems, and King Tech are, well, maybe not dead. Baro strikes up, TP support's coming in. He will make it back at range of his shrine in time. A little bit further down, Matthew trying to tank through everything Storm Spirit and Yao is throwing at him, which was quite a lot to tank. Two points up in Scorched Earth, plus having the raindrops. But it wasn't enough at the end of the day. But you did bring four heroes from LGD to the bottom lane. The only one who didn't move was Eleven. Giving more space for Tomato. You've still got Ben Jazz just free farming up on top. And it seems a big secret to Infamous's... Well, not that secret. Uh, just the way they seem to win is when Ben Jazz gets a lot of farm on, on the core. They run in and then he just has success in the fights. Just purely the fact he got... Spe like, just because of the space on top lane. Yeah, he's not really pulling ahead though, that's the problem. There's multiple cores on the opposite side that are doing just as well or better than him. Yeah. Uh, so, in order to pull ahead as Juggernaut in this type of game, he needs to find kills because he's playing against an Empower Troll. He's not going to outfarm that. Even if he goes Battle Fury, I still don't think he's going to outfarm the Troll. Maybe they can close the distance then, but Amy should be should be having a very good game against the Juggernaut. And it's in addition to that, it's not just the farming amount. As we said in the draft, it's also a favorable matchup for the Troll in general. So yep. uh, it's got to be a bit worrying for Infamous here. I think they need to try to activate their uh, their Sand King and Puck together and try to look for some kills with Smoke. Oh, they even lose that Courier here. That's bad news. Hey, Victoria got it. It's just, he's just letting off his team for not winning the prediction point. <laughs> oh, it was actually Storm who did the most magic damage as well. He was so active, Toby. We should have just should have just gone for it. Yeah, we didn't we didn't believe we didn't believe enough in Somnus it's because we're still we're still a little bit maybe about him. Hey, hey! <laughs> Here goes the bottom tower and the top tower. Yep, this is something we've also been talking about. I mentioned it a bit on day one. This exact play you are going to be seeing a lot during this tournament where the safe lane towers get exchanged because of how difficult they are to defend, both of them, and how the timing in the game generally just favors that the teams just swap sides and go for that tower. It also makes a lot of sense when you run a hero like a Shadow Shaman looking for that easy push with the Mass Serpent was to start with. Now, Tomato trying to actually have a crack at, a at uh, Amy, and the reason why is because you've got a smoke maneuver from the rest of Infamous. They're rotating up, Sentry Ward's down, but Victoria, he breaks the smoke. They don't have the detection to trigger at the moment as Victoria looks into the back line, sees everyone coming, and LGD, they have a choice. And their choice is actually to TP out the Troll Warlord. They're not going to fight. Oh. Five man smoke fails, they get a lot of information, and they can just cross over to the opposite side of the map. I think it's a good choice to avoid this fight just because of uh, the Magnus hasn't skilled him his ulti yet. He's playing without RP on level 10. Just taking the farming route here with Spell Amp and uh, looking to just get big. Whereas Infamous, with these kind of moves being unsuccessful, they're losing a lot of time, and that just means. Once again, that LGD's farming pattern will just be more effective. You can keep... This is the type of graph that is very telling of the game. Like, when the graph is going like this, <clears throat> 12 minutes in, one team's draft or playstyle is just, like, really outplaying the other one. Yeah. And I, it's, in this game, I feel like it's a bit of both. It's when Infamous feels like they're close, but really, they're losing control. Yeah. Victoria's on a hunt once more. You'll find King Tekka just farming up some Alpha Wolves. Storm Spirit's nearby. Um, at the same time, if Victoria goes on this, it's not going to work. The smoke instantly breaks. This Nyx Assassin, that's twice now has happened. They put down the Sentry Ward, and Victoria doesn't know he just did what he did. He never actually saw the smoke effect. Oh, no, it's going to stop TPS. Oh, close. Sanking did get the TP to top. And that's another failed move, so... <clears throat> Yeah. So LGD just pushed almost a full tier 2 top here. 
is down very low, and now the heroes are also pushing in bottom. They're kind of just kiting Infamous around the map while out farming them. But it's that issue of the Nyx Assassin. A reason yeah. why, like, you, you start to ponder the question, why is Nyx Assassin not banned in the first place every time? Like, in almost every game that I've watched so far on the group stage, it's been Nyx Assassin causing problems, be it through like stopping smoke ganks, finding extra vision, being the being the team that has the better information when they go for initiation. It's been a really powerful hero so far. I, yeah. I think it's gonna get even more love later on, as well. But I think it's gonna get more can't, hatred can't later ban, on. <laughs> you can't ban everything. You gotta let something through. That is true. And there's multiple other heroes that you also really don't want to give away if if they're feeling well, confident. Matthew, he can do. He's acting like, I don't know if he's trying to act like he doesn't see what's he here, but okay, yeah. Nice doesn't need to do, waits it up, and uh, Vendetta was stolen by the Rubik. So, now he can be their ward. Ooh, that's actually a really nice steal. If they can get close enough to catch somebody out. Looking at a 5k lead right now for LGD. Almost 6. Just, once again, keeping the farm up. So, so this is what's funny to me, right? Like, now the game is playing out like I thought it would in the first 10 minutes. The, the, now there's just, like, this farming pattern and, and slow play, which is just very characteristic for this type of lineup. They just wanted to have a little bit of a brawl in the beginning on top of that. But now it's slowing down, and that is clearly favoring LGD. And Infamous, once again, will have to find some sort of opening. They just wasted two smokes, though, and that's, that's really expensive. And that's also the reason this Vendetta steal is so powerful right now, because they need to compensate for their lack of smokes to try to get information. And Rubik will find the Storm. Uh, but Storm Spirit, he doesn't want to stick around. He doesn't see anybody. They have the Observe Wars down. Benjaz is TPing off the bottom lane. So no one's farming mid or pushing mid. You've got King Tekker as well as Tomato showing himself up on top. So LGD are reading the fact that Infamous are ready to pressure in from the north. And here we go for trade-off again. Tier 1 for uh, Tier 1 Tower. This trade is a lot less common, but it will obviously happen from time to time. Uh, these towers are way easier for the defensive team to uh, to protect and deal with. But if the rotations are this way, you can't defend now. You have five heroes on either side, more or less. And if the if you start TPing up heroes, it becomes apparent. Yep. And if they all want to TP in close to the tower, then there's so much delay on the TPs that you're outnumbered. That's why... Uh, that's why now, like, if LGD keep pushing, you can come in from behind. You can use the shrines. Eleven's baiting him to come in with the RP. But then you get a vendetta Rubik. He can move in closer. There's no sentry ward down just yet. Shadow Shaman is holding on to one of them. But Rubik needs some good control. Some good vision. And he's giving all of it. He's getting so much information right now. It's actually not bad for Tomato. Farmed up the uh, mass serpent wards and is now able to afford up his Veil of Discord. Yep. Veil and Blinks, minus 16. It's Pretty decent timing. Do you think you have enough to sell? Uh, not on his own. And Storm Spirit. He's still got the arcane rune. They could snipe the shaman here if uh, Puck could connect with a blink. Uh, <laughs> two vendetta heroes running past each other's ships in the night. And nothing happens. There's just too much information available to both sides. They can. Mm -hmm. Do with it as they will. And LGD aren't under any kind of pressure, right? Like they, they don't have to fight. It's infamous that have to force the issue. Yep. And they're getting information, but they're not finding the opening they want. Like the only thing they found was the Storm Spirit, who they know they can't kill off before he gets away unless Doom is able to close the distance. But there's too much vision on oh, the Doom. I think King Tekka could be in trouble here in bottom lane. They do have two heroes here. I think this duo can kill him when they have Vendetta ready. Is it he enough? might be getting out in time. He's getting out in time. Because he's still got Sandstorm as well as Blink. Oh, Shaman had a sentry. They could have definitely killed him there. If if Nyx had ulti, he would be dead. But he did not have it. So they couldn't connect. Infamous are bringing numbers down. They're yep. invading the Radiant Jungle once more. Got to try and find their target. Got to be careful, however. Magnus does have Blink RP available. So Victoria is now again do it, getting the information. Sees a lot. They had, that Observe Ward also scattered the Juggernaut moving down south. So LGD, they, they'll have to choose soon. Do they want to lose their tier 2 tower? I think they will try to defend after taking the mid tier 1, actually. Well, they fortified it by a little bit of extra time. Tier 1 tower does go down the mid. Damn, he's so quick at doing that. Where's your TP? Oh, they're in? going Roche. They're just going to go Roche instead. Okay, so a T1 for a tier 2 plus Roshan for LGD. Yeah, good trade for them if they manage to pull this off. 
And the courier is scouting Nyx Assassin. All storm. Oh, Benjaz will be able to finish off the tower. Somnus just jumping forward. Confidence. Make, maybe making Infamous believe they're going for a fight which will take attention away from other objectives like Roshan. Which Troll Warlord will take now. Wait, are they... Are they yeah, they saw Nyx. Dust? He's hasted as well. Ah, uh, yeah. You can't control it. Tomato does have his blink as well, so a blink into Dream Coil. They can lock him down. As if Victoria decides to get a little bit oh, cute, myth. which he did beautifully. He actually spiked Carapust, so the um, the caustic finale would trigger. I believe that's actually what he what he just did then. Yep, sounds likely. So uh, Nix is a pretty good hero against Sanking because the way Sanking plays fights is a lot about weaving in and out, and has these abilities that uh, all deal damage. So if you Carapace at the right time, you can mess with him quite a lot. It could have also just been a Sandstorm there. He could have Carapace the Sandstorm. He could have Carapace the Burrow Strike if he predicts that's coming in. And even when Sanking epicenters in, if you're Carapace, he will not be able to really land his stun instantly. So. Uh, Nyx is just good against a lot of heroes. Oh, fight's coming on top lane. Where's that vision from the Radiant? It's not in deep enough yet. They just leave one defensive ward, but eyes are on the Doom. And walking around with a dust and troll just blinks forward looking for the kill on Matthew. They'll get the Barra Strike off and now with the Dream Core catching three and the Silence on three. This is Infamous's fight. The Mass Serpent wants it down. RP really not doing anything because he never got it off. He died too quickly. Aegis Immortal has brought the troll back to life again. Ben Jazz has to start retreating out. Meanwhile, Storm looking for King Tech who Barra strikes himself away with a double stun trying to get the distance. The healing ward cannot give enough regeneration. But Infamous with a 2-2 trade-off. Mass Serpent Wards are away from the tower. And Aegis is burned, as you said. Infamous would have won this fight really hard if Juggernaut had mana enough for his ultimate. But he didn't. There was no Omni Slash in that fight, even. He would have got a secondary kill on the troll, perhaps. That moment you need to mango. I'm not sure why his mana was so low, though. He... He used Spin and Healing Ward. I guess, I guess he used Spin, Healing Ward, and TP. And then maybe he missed his Manta. Then he doesn't have the mana anymore. That's a problem that Juggernaut has to deal with in this itemization. You generally see Juggers go for this build where you have Ring of Aquila into Manta style, but some Juggers uh, do a, a drum on the way to solve this problem. Not in Benjus' build though. He's going to go for the Diffusal, which will also help a bit on the mana front. And now he's flying out of clarity. That's a bit too late. <laughs> but, better, better late than never. Uh, he's got, he needs to stay full mana all the time in case a fight breaks out, else the... The LGD side will be able to abuse the fact that Omni Slash is not present. I think in that fight, Benja's, you know, it's easy to say afterwards, but I think it's better for him to probably just get the Omni Slash off rather than the spin and then play around afterwards. But it was a really good spin too, so it's hard to it's hard to say whether it would have been better or not. But the the position that Tomato set up for them was really good. So I think he could have maybe even survived without his spin afterwards. Yeah. But with that three-man call, huh? Oh, Victoria. Oh, they didn't see him. Yeah, they moved to the other side, oh, but they may be really kill. happy about it. If they can kill off the troll, no! He'll blink down King Tekka. He got close. But not close enough. They did actually see that Radiant Sentry ward there. But they don't want to kill it off. It still reveals their position, or confirms their position, if they do it. So instead, Infamous look towards the mid. And LGD, maybe this time 11 will be able to get that RP off. Now he's got a Shadow Blade available. Oh, they might smoke here. Yep, five man smoke. Troll Warlord was in range though, and he'll actually break his smoke to Infamous. Yeah, they ping, they were paying attention. So LGD gonna go for a wraparound. But who do they find? Infamous are pretty tight in together. Oh, Ben just this is so greedy. If he gets caught here, this is gonna be awful for Infamous. This is so bad of a position next to the enemy shrine. It's either that or he is the trap. He missed the first stun, gets his spin off. SL able to actually get the lift into the tomb. Onto the storm spirit. He'll have the regeneration thanks to the fact they're fighting on top of the shrine. RP catching two, but then uh, it's actually not RP stolen. It was only skewer from SL. There's nothing more he can do. Amy's already got himself a triple kill. And on two out of the three cores of Infamous to boot. If Infamous want to make this play, you either you either commit fully or you don't go. And the problem there is that the the Rubik and the Doom set up the storm 
next to the shrine, but the Juggernaut didn't get in. And then, you know, th th this is already an inferior fighting position where LGD are coming in smoke from the bottom side, and they get a, a good two hero RP skewer into the, into the shrine, into the circle wards, the fight is over. Yeah, they have to they have to all in pounce and just see what picks they can get immediately to build themselves an advantage in this shrine fight, or they need to not even be there. That's very greedy, in my opinion, from Ben just to farm the ancients in this position. Just trying to be efficient. But, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think Infamous has the right idea that they're trying to set up a fight like that, where maybe they um, they position themselves so LGD show first, and then they get the jump. But the problem is that that fighting position is just too bad. There's even an Observer Ward from the Radiant place there as well at the Shrine, so... Um, it's unlikely. If Infamous want to spring this exact trap, they need someone to stand in the tree line below the Shrine so that the smoke pops before they head in. And they have all the information, then they... Ideally, they also have a ward down, and then they can... Infamous are coming again. The oh, jump up, wow. Matthew takes so much damage. The BKB trigger from the Troll Warlord. Somnus doesn't find his opening just yet, but the Troll Warlord, the never-ending bash onto Benjaz. He goes for the Omni Slash now, but gets bashed a second. He gets out of it. The Troll versus Chugger. We talked about it. And that is Exhibit A, B, and C of how superior it is. We've got a skewering chicken from Rubik, but that is not enough to escape the Troll's mouth. And this could be... It could be, be mid-rax. It, it could even be game. They can't reach the racks before the entirety of Infamous respawn, but they, they, LGD have to be feeling how far ahead they are based they on have, these couple of fights, so they might just go for it. They have RP wards. up right now. Like, it just came off cooldown. Yeah, You've got 18 Bloodstone charges on a Storm Spirit. Yeah, this should be racks, actually. They have Serpent Wards and, and yep. Power Running. Epicenter. Oh, he'll commit it, King Tekka. The damage is decent, but Yao doesn't die, and now Somnus controls him. King Tekka will fall. There was no follow -up. The puck just wasn't there, and now he gets RP skewed into Vortex, just thrown around like a ragdoll. Jumps forward, at least can kill off the Shaman, but loses his life, and it just seems like Infamous are trying to get a couple of kills to their name. Victoria might help them out with that one. He'll have Spike Carapace. Second, he hits the ground, but throws out the stun instead. The Tier 3 tower is lost, and LGD couple of consolation prizes given to Infamous. Yeah, they did get the racks, but they still got kills and the tower, so... Uh, what was that trade overall? I think it was two for two. Yep, and an extra two Bloodstone charges into the Storm Spirit. Yep. Just that was a pretty clutch play, by the way, from Matthew there with the Glimmer Cape onto the Puck. I thought Puck was just going to die during that RP, but they got the Glimmer off. He got the phase off, he jumped in and killed the Shadow Shaman, almost got out. If it wasn't for Spike Carapace, that could have been a kill into escape for Tomato, but... Nyx Victoria was fast in the moment, and therefore LGD should just be probably looking to either wait for the next Roshan, or just go for a smoke play right now and, and try to end the game. If they take any good fight on the enemy side of the map, the game ends. They can actually just get two sides of Rex, or maybe even all the way to the throne if they win a good fight. So Well, Roshan could be up in about 10 seconds time, so we'll yep. keep our eyes very closely on him. Infamous need to be on their toes now. And again, they I think they have to to look for a fight themselves once again. It's not oh. easy, though. They're looking for one. It's the Troll wall. Oh. oh, no! He used the wrong target, so the Dream Coil onto the Troll wall. On. Matthew's trying to get in range, and now the Troll, they turn around on the Doombringer. There goes your Omni Slash, but Benjaz, the damage is minimal until now. He does a spin onto Yao, but hit Amy right on the money. Benjaz will fall. Tomato goes on the run, but the Orchid is also there from the Storm Spirit. A silenced up part can't go anywhere, and GG is called Infamous. Understand, this game is definitely over. Pretty clean game overall from LGD. There were a couple of minor mistakes, but they just they understood their lineup very well. What it could do, what it needed to do. Maybe even did a bit better than expected in the lanes. Uh, the storm kill in mid, for example, or rather the Nyx kill on the puck in the beginning. A couple of extras that he found uh, propelled them into a pretty easy mid game. This this was a very predictable game after a minute like ten, just because of you could you could just see the tendency of the game how it was going. Infamous tried their best to find the smoke picks, they didn't get them. Then they were like cornered and out farmed and eventually just get rolled over. We got one prediction. We got the troll Toby. It's not I got two predictions. Oh, I, had, you did? I had the troll on one as well for uh for oh, the, the triple first kill? triple kill. Oh right, yeah. Yeah, so Storm did get a triple though, I think, but he didn't get the first one. No, he didn't. That one belonged to Amy. Ah, <sighs> yeah, victory is mine. And hopefully uh game two, maybe victory goes the way of infamous. We can keep this series nice and close. Either way, we'll find out after the break.